What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked On NBA, the biggest stories with the local experts. I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, also host of Locked On Rockets right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Today, we'll be joined by Jake Madison from Locked On Pelicans to discuss Jose Alvarado's career 38-point night for the Pels. Also, New Orleans rising to the number two overall spot in the Western Conference. How have the Pelicans reintroduced Zion Williamson and still maintained a top defense? We're going to break down... All of that for you, but first, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis this season. Get the latest odds and trends for every single professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer, even esports. They've got you covered for everything over at BetOnline.net. Right now, you can head over to BetOnline to take a look at who the odds on favorite is to go number one overall in this year's 2023 NBA draft. Spoiler alert. It's Victor Wembanyama at minus 1,000. But here's the funny thing. Next on the list is actually anybody other than Scoot Henderson has a plus 825 chance to go number one overall. And then Scoot Henderson is plus 1,000 to go number one overall. So for all those odds and more, be sure to visit betonline.net to learn more about the trends in action available to you. BetOnline, it's where the game starts. Joining us now is Jake Madison, host of Locked on Pelicans. You can follow on Twitter at Nola Jake. The Pelicans riding a four-game win streak, now number two in the Western Conference after a 121-106 win at home against the Denver Nuggets. Off the backs of a huge, a career game, if you will, from one Jose Alvarado. 38 points in 26 minutes off the Pelicans bench. Jake, walk us through the career night for, for Jose there. Uh, dude just couldn't miss. Like, I don't know if there's a ton to this other than he was hot and his shot was falling. And that's the most important thing. He got it going early, right? You were running point Zion, which frees up other guys. So he tosses him the ball and he starts knocking down those wide open threes. And from then on, he was feeling it. He was taking heat check shots. Those were falling. He realized he was quicker, faster than some of the bigs that were being switched onto him. He embarrassed DeAndre Jordan at one point, dribbled a literal circle around him and then shot the three over him that went in. They were trying to get him 40 at the end of the game, kind of just ran out of time and I think wanted to do the right sportsmanship thing and get him out of the game. But he's just an impactful player. We've seen it from the postseason when he was guarding Chris Paul with the Phoenix Suns in that first round series. This is a guy that, despite being undersized, shouldn't really be succeeding out there on the court. Just does. This is what he does. You put him in and that plus minus is going to be positive. He makes plays, whether it's defensively with the Grand Theft Alvarado steals or offensively. He's a better scorer, I think, than people realize. Just an impactful player. And it raises the question, Jackson, of like, is this Pelicans team one of the deepest in the league right now? Because they've won these four games right now and a bunch of them haven't included Brandon Ingram or Herb Jones that's two starters out and you've still smoked two teams in the Denver Nuggets and the Toronto Raptors that we'd consider good absolutely and I do want to follow up on on Herb Jones and Ingram here in just a minute but but Jake how how important was this win kind of maybe a statement type win against the Denver Nuggets one of the other top teams in the Western Conference to kind of let everybody know hey like this team is is legitimate yeah, you know, you've seen them get a couple of their wins against the Golden State Warriors where Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green haven't played. They've played the San Antonio Spurs a bunch of times. They've won those games too. Those are the games you should be winning, but it's can you compete against some of the top teams in the league? They didn't do well against the Boston Celtics earlier this month, but to get these wins against the Toronto Raptors, the Denver Nuggets, quality teams, and not just getting close wins, but winning by double digits. They really took it to Toronto, kind of unleashing Zion maybe as a fringe MVP candidate. I think it's kind of a signal of intent across the league of, hey, we're good. We're building something here in New Orleans. We're not just beating up on bad teams. We're going to be a team you're going to have to deal with at some point. I do think it sends a message across the league that they're doing this still shorthanded, which I think tells you their best basketball is yet to come. There's still a lot of room for growth for this team. It's going to make them exciting to watch throughout the rest of the year. You mentioned Zion there as a potential kind of fringe MVP candidate. Right now, his numbers are, are pretty solid. I mean, 23 and a half points on 64% true shooting to go with seven boards, four assists this season. You mentioned kind of the point Zion, you know, thing going on there. How has that looked? How has he kind of, how have the Pelicans kind of reacclimated him into, you know, the success that they had this, you know, this past season and then kind of reintroducing Zion into the mix of that success this year? 
Yeah, they're still trying to figure it out, right? Like, this is a guy that was getting all NBA votes his second year in the league when he was kind of unleashed by then head coach Stan Van Gundy. And you've seen him put up some ridiculous games. Against the San Antonio Spurs, he had 30 points, 15 rebounds, 8 assists. He came close to a triple-double against the Toronto Raptors as well. When they put the ball in his hands, this is a guy that just has so much court gravity. It's going to create open shots for others. And as long as he's passing and he's capable of making those passes, it really just opens opens everything up and makes it so much easier. There's a reason Jose Alvarado in this game was open for all of those three point shots because teams will let anyone else beat them other than Zion Williamson. And even then he's still able to go out and score. You're kind of seeing him reintroduce himself to the NBA at large with what he's been doing this season. So while the numbers that you just read off there look somewhat pedestrian for Zion the past week or two he's really picked it up and I expect we'll see more of this point Zion going forward where they're putting him at the top of the three-point line letting him get downhill survey the entire court and making the right read and the right pass or scoring and that's going to get him into that conversation especially if the Pelicans still win the other thing that really stands out about this Pelicans team, Jake, is they're a top three defense, number three in the NBA. How how are they managing to you know put forth such a, such a strong defensive showing when you have a guy like Zion out there who's had some question marks about his defensive capabilities throughout his career? Yeah, they, they remind you defensively of the Toronto Raptors, that kind of swarming defense that's trying to get their arms in the passing lanes, force steals, and get out and run in transition. And they're doing a really good job of that so far. They're aggressive on the ball. They have a guy, you know, Jose Alvarado can defend there. CJ's playing some of his best defense that he's ever played this season. And then you have rookie Dyson Daniels at 6'8", that's really great at the point of attack, and he's getting significant minutes. They're really aggressive there, and then they're just really solid on their rotations. They get out and they contest three-point shooters well in that kind of scramble defense. They have multiple guys that can guard multiple positions, so they really do love to switch one through five, which I think has been key for him so far. And it's kind of freed up Zion Williamson to be almost Duke Zion in a sense. He's had a couple of highlight blocks, highlight steals these past couple of games. Looks like he's kind of finally in game shape, which we haven't really seen from him in a little while. And that's why you're seeing him really start to succeed on that side of the ball. He's been satisfactory at worst defensively this whole season minus a few games in the beginning when it was clear he was just getting some of his conditioning back so the fact that they've been such a good unit defensively certainly is going to aid their offense that's why they're top five in net rating right now I'm glad you mentioned his name there a moment ago rookie Dyson Daniels has gone from kind of inconsistent minutes DNPs to he's getting over 20 minutes a night over this most recent stretch even starting the past couple games for the Pels how has his impact and kind of adjustment to the NBA looked so far yeah, he, he's been good. It was a slow go, and the biggest question about him was, can he shoot? And we're seeing it. He's shooting above 40% from three right now. He doesn't need to be high volume with some of the scores that they have on this squad. So if he can go out and just defend... He's going to get minutes, and you're seeing that right now. Earlier in the season with Zion out, with Brandon Ingram out, he shut down Luka Doncic for the most part in a win at home for New Orleans. I think that was kind of his big coming out party. At 6'8", he's a really good rebounder, and he's a good connector. He's not a guy yet that's creating for others in like a traditional point guard a la Steve Nash, but you see a lot of Lonzo Ball in him, a lot of connecting around the perimeter. If he can find the right read inside, he'll get it to one of the big men, and then just playing solid defense. That's all they need need out of him right now given that you have Brandon Ingram Zion Williamson CJ McCollum Trey Murphy who's been shooting you know the cover off of the basketball right now you have all of these offensive threats as long as he can go out and defend and rebound which he's been doing that's why New Orleans drafted him eighth that's why I think you're going to see his minutes go up as the season goes on you mentioned their names earlier, though. Brandon Ingram, you know, he's missed now four games in a row, had the, the toe injury. Herb Jones missed a couple games. How how severe are those injuries? Can we expect them you know, to miss significantly more time or, or what's you know, the latest timetable on when we can expect them to return? Yeah, I think you'll see them both back within a week or so. New Orleans just tends to be very cautious when it comes to injuries. If guys hurt, they're not going to rush him back. Brandon Ingram's the type of guy that doesn't actually rush back from injury. He doesn't like to really be out there playing hurt. It seems like it's suboptimal for him. So he wants to make sure that he's 100% to be able to go out and do the things that he wants to do. So you won't see those guys back till they're ready. But these aren't things that are going to be season-long injuries or reoccurring injuries. These are just things they're taking a lot of caution on. They're looking towards the future. They want to have a deep playoff run here in New Orleans and with a record being second best in the West right now they don't feel they need to rush these guys back and they feel that the, this cast again being a very deep team can carry them pretty far I expect to see both those guys back in the next week this is just kind of how New Orleans operates 
Despite the injuries to key contributors, the Pelicans haven't skipped a beat. Is Zion Williamson going to be a fringe MVP candidate this season? Are the Pels legit title contenders? Of course, you're going to have us covered for all of that and more over at Locked on Pelicans. Jake, I appreciate you stopping by Locked on NBA with me. Of course. Thanks for having me on, Jackson.